We thank you for your most noble service. Now go in the name of king and country. Ah, oh, thank god that crap's over. Ah, yes. So you're the new help, huh? Oh, don't look so surprised. You really think I talk in that nonsense accent all the time? Uh, I do that just to keep the nobility happy. I'm starting to get really bloody sick of the nobility, let me tell you. What have you told people? What would it matter? Oh, hello, I'm some peasant, and by the way, the king puts on a voice. I mean, the people who are smart enough to care or understand know already, and those who don't, don't care and also won't believe you, so, um, you know. <laughs> what an amusingly astute question. Are you sure you're a peasant? I mean, I'm just saying, you know. Well, as much as I'm trying to raise education standards or, how do I put it, establish any sort of education standards for the common person in this kingdom, it's a fight. See, everyone thinks the king this, the king that. And the reality is the nobility are dragging their heels on everything and they're very happy to go, oh, you should all blame the king. Of course they are. But when I try and get, you know, progressive changes, oh, suddenly everything's impossible. Suddenly this monarch is a radicalist. Mm, yes, of course. Like, hey, how about you not treat your serfs like animals oh this is very untraditional oh uh, yeah whatever anyway i'll get my way eventually till then keep the idiots happy it's basically like you you know have your chickens pluck away at their seed and think that they rule the world and eventually eventually we'll get the changes needed for <laughs> well, for some of these pillocks to actually have to treat people with a bit of respect. I'm basically the only person these pillocks treat with any respect, and that's because I have a robe. Ah, and let me not even start on the bloody foreign dignitaries. I mean, take that little snake from Belgium. Oh, yes, Belgium, that world power of Belgium. And a little runt says, I ramble. Says, I ramble. Me ramble. Nonsense. I've never been known to ramble or indeed speak in one on sentences or talk for particularly long. I'm practically famous for being concise. I should really just have them executed on the spot. I. Why don't I have them executed on the spot? Oh, right, yes, I remember why. Uh, yes, uh, the king of Belgium's nephew. Well, he can sod off back to Belgium because what's he even doing here? Oh, it's important to bolster diplomatic relations between our two great nations. Oh, please, I could sneeze and accidentally wipe your nation off the face of the earth. Sanctimonious little prick. I swear this, dim this diplomacy nonsense, uh, it might be better for the country, and I know it's better for the country, but it's an utter pain in the tonsils, you know what I mean? And having these witty little snot bags in a diplomatic immunity running around as if they own the place. Just once, I'd like to challenge them to a duel like the olden days and watch the fear of God appear in their beady little eyes. Anyway, as I was saying, I do not ramble. I'm a king. A ramble from a king is a declaration or a speech. It should be treated with great reverence, respect, not sneered at by some little tosser I could knock out by turning around too fast. <sighs> yes, once again, even if you told people any of this, no one would believe you. They would think you were a crazed peasant who has either drank too much or indulged in the back alleys. Well, <laughs> I think you'll find it's quite important to be respectful and able to keep a secret in this job. 
you may or may not be aware the gentleman who preceded you in your role was something of a confidant <sighs> you know a lot of people criticize me for having a state funeral for a servant I don't care that guy worked here in the palace for 54 years and not a single time did he leak a piece of information not a single time did he get tempted by bribes <laughs> I mean you'll have already had this so you'll know as part of the test you get tempted in various ways and if any lack of credulity is found well you wouldn't be here another reason why I trust you without knowing you <laughs> despite being one of your first days in the job you're stepping into the shoes of an unheralded giant someone who could be trusted by a kingdom <laughs> and known by so few I like to treat those who are like that as if they were one of the family because as far as I'm concerned they basically are so when he passed away I made sure it was a good funeral I made sure he was given the respect worthy of someone who did so much for his country and I made sure that that family will never ever ever starve as long as there are, as long as there's a kingdom to protect ah it's funny with books <laughs> i suppose still being somewhat of a modern invention a publicist asked him to write a book about all the little secrets of the royals all those little things that the public would love to know <laughs> all the incredibly unimportant things but <laughs> I remember my father told me the story that he just looked at them and said we don't do that do you understand in the game of international politics the number of people who would stab you in the back as soon as smile at you and this man not afforded a royal wage not afforded a life much beyond the means of any other commoner had more integrity and decency than basically anyone else I've ever known the history books will remember me <laughs> for good or bad they will remember me but sadly, they will not remember people like this. <sighs> I heard one of the philosophers <laughs> claiming that history, the real history, is made by those willing to take none of the credit. In some ways, I wish that could be me. With so much... needing done but I unfortunately am as much a political being as anyone else at court I need to play my pieces well in order to achieve the most I can <laughs> a king is not a ruler if he only has one subject after all so I must play each piece accordingly understand what I can and cannot do understand who I can at least moderately trust and not throttle the king of Belgium's nephew no matter how tempted I may be to do so at this point, I might just invade Belgium, 
just so I can kick him out of court. It sounds like a worthwhile trade at the moment. <sighs> you know, you are, um, <laughs> you're surprisingly observant, seemingly. Easy to talk to. I thought it'd be near impossible to replace the man who came before you, and yet... Y you look at me... With a certain look in your eye that betrays... A level of understanding that is not common... Well... Anywhere, really. It's almost as if you can rewind and study everything I say. Freeze time. Imagine such a thing. Can you comprehend the ability to freeze and rewind a speech? To re-listen? Oh, if only such things were possible. Still, perhaps one day. <laughs> if these mad scientist types keep hard at work. One thing I'm very much convinced of, and much to the chagrin of the church, is that we must allow the heretics, who I'm often told to behead, the ability to explore and discover. Ah, sure, maybe they're not always right or always perfect. But the idea that human discovery is heretical... <laughs> Would God prefer us live in caves? No. Anyway. I'm tired. You... What? You want to talk more? As in you want me to talk to you more? <laughs> I'm sure there'll be plenty of chances for you to listen to my thoughts. Hmm? Are you aware at this moment in time that you are talking to your king while I have a certain fondness for your precociousness and your rather clear intelligence I will not suffer disrespect gladly the weight of the crown on my head does not allow it <laughs> the crown lies so heavy on a king that to bend my neck for an instant would cause it to snap do you understand me I must at all times well, in any sort of royal capacity, which is, let's face it, is any time I'm not dreaming, I must represent my country. This is a private conversation. Yes. And yes, I have said things that I would not say in a public space. That does not, however mean that your levels of respect for me could drop anywhere below that of utmost. However much I may once again <laughs> admire the question. It is something I would have asked. <laughs> you certainly are an interesting one. You would almost believe you are some sort of nobility between your smile and your... Anyways, um, yes, okay, so, um, I'm sure you still need to be orientated around the palace and, um, what? I have no idea, I have no comprehension what you may be speaking of, peasant. I am not blushing 
very obviously. A king does not blush in the presence of a mere commoner, and the very assertion that I may be doing so is frankly treasonous. Tread carefully. Did you just giggle at me? Hmm. <laughs> well, you're on very thin ice at this moment. Should you proceed in this manner, a very grim fate will await you. So, I suggest getting it together, remembering where you are, and behaving accordingly. <sighs> now, if you'll excuse me, I have a need for rest. Tomorrow is another fine day of diplomacy. I am to meet a potential bride for all the interest she will likely be. <sighs> it's not that I don't want to be in a relationship, it's that it's so limiting. <laughs> My relationship must be inherently politically advantageous. If I were to meet a great scholar or a scientist or an artist, unless they have royal blood, I am practically forbidden from showing any legitimate interest. <laughs> Sometimes I do wonder if I should just say to hell with it. I'm a good political operator as it is. Again, vaguely points to a live Belgian nephew. So, perhaps I could afford to allow myself the luxury of choosing the partner I really wanted. Ah. <sighs> Tis not the life of a king. <laughs> Rest. I will be retiring to my chambers. You should rest as well. <laughs> you have to get up earlier than me, and that's saying something. Your job is one of the few that may have to work harder than mine in this country. So rest now. You'll have plenty more chances to speak with me. Of that, there is no doubt. <laughs> 